Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. So today we're just going to quickly look at creating this kind of animated nav bar here. You can see when we scroll down the nav bar disappears and then when we scroll up it reappears no matter where we are or how far down we've scrolled on the page, okay? You can also see when we hover our links we get this nice little animated line up here underneath. Okay, so as I say when you scroll down it disappears and when you scroll up it reappears. So you see I'm seeing this on quite a lot of websites now and I think it's quite a cool effect. So yeah, let's just jump straight into it and I hope you enjoy it. Cheers guys. Okay guys, so to get started, if we just create our usual file, so index.html, uh, we'll do the uh, style.css file as well, and the app.js. Okay, this is all within my navbar project folder. Come into index.html and start a boilerplate. Then in the head section, we're going to link to our style.css. And then coming into the body, we're going to link to our app.js file using a script source here, app.js. And in the body, we're going to do a, a, a header tag with a class of header. And then within this header tag, we're going to do a div with a class of logo. And in here, we're going to have our brand text, okay? And then coming underneath this div, we're going to say nav, nav tag. Within the nav tag, a ul for unordered list. Then we're going to have multiple li elements with a a tag included okay so this first li is for our home link i'll duplicate this four times second link will be our about page third link will be products uh, fourth link will be contact and then we'll just say a blog page for the last page okay so if you open this in live server now you can see our nav bar there with our brand logo as well Okay, now coming underneath this header, we're going to say section tag, give us a class of one, and then within this section tag, we're going to have a H1, saying welcome, like that capital letters, and underneath this, we'll do a P tag, just with lorem, to just to generate some random text. Put them, put both those elements inside their own container. Put that to the end there. Then we also want to add another section tag here. So we're just going to say uh, div, actually no, section, just give us a class of two. And that's it for our index.html file. So if you jump into style.css now, we're going to, to, we're going to use um, CSS variables here. So let's define some CSS variables. In order to do that, we'll say uh, colon root and then curly brace. So let's do our first color. So this will be our main color variable we're going to be using. I'm going to set this. Uh, let's do E3, E2DF. Okay, so that's like a grey colour. Our second colour will just be black. Remember with CSS variables, you need to add the two dashes at the front. Okay, and then our third colour, will make this kind of a, a reddy, purpley colour. Okay, that's 9A1750, like so. Okay, so now let's just do our global settings. So we'll say margin, zero padding zero and box size in a border box okay so that's all the padding's gone there and the margins have gone that's great i'm going to add this poppins font here from google fonts so if you just copy that html header tag copy that in there and then we'll also copy the css rules as well here and we'll paste that in our global settings as well css okay so if you check that out you can see that font's looking much nicer Okay, so underneath the globals, we're going to um, let's start off with the header. And here we're going to say position. And we want this to be fixed, okay? And then at the top, we're going to say zero, left zero. And then come underneath this, let's say a width of 100% and a height of 7 rem. Okay, and then we want our background color to be that um, main variable color. Okay, so say var bracket dash dash main color. And then we'll say a z index of one because we want the header to be in front of everything else on the page. We're going to have a transition because this is going to be animated of 0.56. Okay, and then we're going to copy that and add when we, we're going to apply a scroll class. Okay, so this is when we add the scroll class to the header, we just do a minus seven rem. Okay, to the to the top. Okay, and then if we come underneath this, we're going to say uh, dot logo. So we'll start our logo, and here we're going to say position absolute again. 
we'll say left 10% and here we'll say uh, bottom of one rem okay and then we're going to give this a we'll say a we'll do a text transform uppercase and then we'll say a font size which gives us a font size of 1.5 rem okay to make it a bit bigger we'll give it a color of that black so the second second color Okay, so now if we come underneath that, we'll do our nav bar. So we're going to say position absolute again. We're going to make this left of 30% this time. And then we're going to say bottom one rem to make it the same as the logo. Then we're going to say a width of we'll say 60%. So if we just check that out now. Okay. And then if we come back, so we come underneath this, and we're going to say nav ul. We're going to display this as flex, okay? So they uh, go in a row as opposed to a column. We're going to say list style none, just to get rid of the bullet points. And then we're going to say justify content as space around, just to give it a nice even space in between the uh, links. Okay, so that's looking better there. And then also, so if we come underneath this, we're going to say nav ul li to select list elements and then the anchor tag within them, so A. We'll say text decoration none to remove the lines. You can see the lines have now disappeared. And we also want to do um, sort of color. So we'll say color and we'll just use that second variable color. So we'll copy and paste that. So they should be black now. And then we also want to do here, let's give it a text transform of uppercase as well. And we'll give this a font size, just make it a bit smaller of 0.9 rem. Okay, so that's looking much better now. So now I want to style when we hover these link elements. I want to have a line, an animated line underneath when we hover them. Okay, so I'm just going to copy this Navul Lia selector, and then we're going to use the CSS after uh, selector here. And so we're going to do content, just nothing for now. Underneath this, we're going to say display block, and then here we're going to give it a width of zero to start with. A height of one pixel, that's going to be the height of the line underneath. And then we're going to give it a background color of that second, that black color. And then we'll say a transition, we're going to give this width at 0.3 seconds, okay? And then coming after this, so that's it for that section. Now we want to copy this, this Navul Li after, and we just want to add a hover before that after selector, okay? So we will come after the A, just do colon hover, two colons after. And in here we're going to say width of 100%. And then here we're going to use that transition again. We're going to say width 0.3 seconds, just to get the animation. So now you see when we hover, we get that nice line appear underneath our links. Okay, so now coming underneath this, let's just start our sections under here we're going to first style our section one so we're going to give this position absolute uh, top zero left zero and then we're also going to say height of 100 vh viewport heights and a width of 100 percent and then we want to give us a background color of the first uh, variable color we chose so vera bar and then main color and then I think, yeah, underneath that, we're going to say our container where we stored our two elements here, our welcome and P elements. And here we're just going to say position absolute again. And we'll say this time left 10% uh, to align with our logo. And also a top of, we'll say 30% for now. And then we'll give this a width of 50%. Just take, yes, yeah, so that's looking okay. I just want to add some margin as well. So if we come underneath this, we'll add some margin to that H1 because it looks a bit too close to the paragraph at the moment. So we'll say margin bottom, just give it one rem for now. And you can see we get a nice bit of space there now. Okay, I just want to make this a different color as well. So we'll set the color of this H1 to make it that third variable color we chose. So we get that nice little pinky color now. Okay, so, and then we just want to make this a bit bigger as well, so we give it a font size of 2 rem. So, if we come underneath that, 
just going to sort out our second section now. So just say position absolute, top 100 VH, and then left zero, give us a height of 100 VH, and then we'll also give it a width of 100%. And then also a background color of just that main, actually I'll give it that third color for now, just so you can see the difference. Okay, as you can see, get that separation now. So now let's adjust this nav bar, let's get some animation going. We want it to disappear when we scroll and reappear when we scroll up. Okay, so we've gone to our JavaScript file. Let's first um, select our header. So we'll say const header equals document.query selector header. And then underneath this, we're going to say let um, previous scroll or prev scroll position equal window dot um, page y offset. So if you console log that, just you can see what that is. It just um, it basically just shows you how many pixels you've scrolled on the y axis. Okay, so two eight nine. You can see that in the console there. So now to create a function. So if we say window dot on scroll. Okay, and that's going to equal a function. So when we scroll, it's going to start this function. So we're going to first say let current scroll position equal, and we're going to say that window page y offset again. And now we're going to compare this position to our previous scroll position. So we'll say if previous scroll position is greater than the current scroll position, then we're going to select our header dot class list and we're going to remove the scroll class. Okay. So if you go back to our CSS, what this will do, this will just make remove. I've just noticed an error here. We should, that, that height shouldn't be seven rem. It should be the top minus seven rem. Okay. So we're going to remove that class. So then the scroll, the navbar should appear. Else we're just going to do header.classes.add the scroll class. Okay. And then we need to set the previous scroll position to the current scroll position. Okay. So now you can see when we scroll down, our navbar disappears and then it reappears when we scroll up. Okay, and we can clean this code up. So let's just use a ternary operator here. So I'm going to say previous scroll position is greater than current scroll position question mark. Then we can apply or remove the scroll class else we want to add the scroll class. And then that way we can get rid of the if, if and else statements. This looks a bit cleaner in my opinion. Okay, so now you'll see if we say that it does the same thing. Okay guys, so I'm going to wrap this up there. Um, if you enjoyed it, please give me a like, give me a subscribe, I really appreciate that. And I hope you got a lot out of this video, and I'll see you in the next one. Cheers.